grace and peace be yours in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is just a little uh, Wednesday uh, evening devotional I wanted to to leave with you here in the middle of the week, this being Wednesday, uh, May the 13th, I guess it is. And uh, maybe something you hadn't thought about, but there is a song. I have it in my Bible in the in the margins. It's the Don't Fret Psalm. It tells us, don't fret. Of course, these are times in which we uh, we can fret. And so I thought this might be a good psalm for you. It's Psalm number 37. And if you don't have that uh, marked in your Bible, it's a good one to mark down and then to come back to from time to time when uh, things start pressing in on you. In David's case, it was enemies and uh, problems of uh, of governing the state and all kinds of things were pressing in around him, family problems. Uh, but uh, again, he writes this psalm to us in Psalm 37, Don't Fret. Well, let me read a little bit of that. Psalm 37, verses 1 through 11, particularly, I'm just going to talk to you about, leave the rest of that uh, for you. But in the very first verse, it begins, and the NIV translates it, Do not fret. Doesn't get any clearer that. In fact, he says it again, uh, down in verse 7, uh, Be still before the Lord, wait patiently, and do not fret. And again, in verse 8, uh, Refrain from anger, uh, turn from wrath, and do not fret. Three times uh, in 11 verses, uh, God through David is telling us, don't, don't fret. Uh, and it's easy, I think, in the days in which we live, I think, to, to get all fretful uh, with everything that's, uh, that's going on around us. But uh, break it down a little bit for you. Uh, and then you fill in the blanks for you. Uh, do not fret. And in David's case, it was because of evil men or, uh, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. In other words, don't fret. It's going to pass away. This too is going to come to pass, just like the seasons. Spring will, will, will give place to summer. Summer uh, will give place to winter, just like plants grow up and die and are replaced by other plants. Don't fret. This this is going to pass. This is just part of the seasons of life. Instead of fretting, uh, the next verse, verse 3 says, Trust in the Lord and do good. But quit fretting about what you see happening all around you. Uh, all the mess and the meanness and grumpy people yelling and trying to get their own way and uh, all of that that's going on politically. Uh, this uh, virus that's invaded many uh, communities. Yeah, okay. There's always been something invading some community somewhere. Don't, don't fret, but rather just trust the Lord. It's not out of control. Read the book of Revelation. There's a blessing involved in reading that book. You'll see every aspect God has already delineated. Everything is unfolding according to God's immutable plan. And he has a way of working everything out for good. Just like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they thought they won when they had Christ crucified and got Pilate to uh, do their dirty work for them. Oh, if only they knew. But God worked that all out for the salvation of the whole world. So sometimes it looks like evil men win, but they don't. In the end, God's will is done because Christ is on the throne. God has exalted his anointed one, Jesus Christ. He is on the right hand of the Father. Just trust God and do good. How do you overcome the evil that's in the world? The more evil they do, the more good you do. Just, just trust God and, and do good while all this fretting stuff is going on. Then verse 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Delight. Enjoy God. Take this time with all this craziness going on and just enjoy God. Sing and make melody in your heart to the Lord. Read the Bible, not to study something, just for the sheer joy of hearing God's voice. Walk with Jesus through Galilee. Enjoy God and commit your way to the Lord is the next, the next one. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the new day. Committing your way to the Lord. It's just however it's going to end up, it's going to end up God's way. Lord, wherever this road has taken me uh, may not be the way I planned. Uh, I certainly didn't plan my, uh, my, at my age, uh, my retirement with the collapse of the stock market and all this stuff. But oh well, I'm just going to commit my way to the Lord. However this ends up, it's going to end up God's way. And I believe that. 
So I'm just going to commit my way to him, then I don't have to worry about it. I can enjoy God, not fret, trust him, and do what good I can with the time God gives me. And then it says, be still, in verse 7, before the Lord, and wait patiently for him, and do not fret. Man, that's hard for us. Be still. Don't get caught up in all that uh, shouting and and everybody trying to usurp their way and 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 this thing and that thing and and oh the sky is falling the sky is falling ah, 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 don't fret be still and know that God's on the throne one of my favorite poems and those of you that uh, that know me have heard me probably recite it I came upon it when I was very young a uh, famous missionary by the name of Hudson Taylor who started China Inland Mission sent thousands of missionaries to China and, uh, and it was a poem that he used, and it's written from God's perspective. It lists a little verse, and it says, Bear not a single care thyself. One is too much for thee. The work is mine, and mine alone. Thy work to rest in me. God tells us that our job is just to rest in him. He's got the rest of that. We just need to trust him and, and, and rest in him. Be still before the Lord. Wait patient for him and do not fret. Refrain from anger. Turn from wrath. In other words, don't get caught up in all that meanness you see and people shouting and wanting to have their own way and, and they're saying it's this way and other folks saying it's that way. Don't get caught up in any of that. Refrain from anger. Turn from wrath. Do not fret. Verse 8. It leads only to evil. It, there's no good going to come out of that. For evil men will be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. God's going to take care of it. He's going to balance the books, so don't worry about them. That's God's job. Our job is to trust in Him, not to fret, delight in Him, and do what good we can. Then verse 11, there is this final statement. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy great peace. Not just peace, great peace. Who are the meek? The meek are those folks that society kind of overlooks, the behind-the-scenes people. They're just going about doing their own business, enjoying God. You know, I used to, in, in my young young days, I had written in my Bible, one of my old Bibles, I says, and, and, and the Jesus-freak hippies will inherit the earth. Those folks that uh, society kind of just, just looks around or looks over or looks through and doesn't notice them much. they just going through life, uh, praising the Lord, planting their gardens. Uh, those folks with the cardboard signs that says Jesus loves you or Jesus saves that society kind of looks by, doesn't look at, uh, overlooks would be the word I'm looking for. The meek, those that aren't caught up in all of that. They're the ones ultimately in the end's going to inherit the earth, the gentle persons. So don't be that way. Don't fret. Trust in the Lord. Delight yourself in Him. Commit your way to Him. Be still. And know that He is, he is God. And remember that in the end, it's the meek who will inherit the land and who will enjoy not just peace, but great peace. Great peace to God. God bless you.